What's up guys, Van Zeeven here today with your next tutorial on uh, 2D Java game development. Now today we're going to be creating the sprite sheet and loading it into the game here. Um, in next episode we'll cover doing the, the screen class and actually um, working with elements on top of the screen. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using Photoshop to create a sprite, uh, to create a sprite map, and then you can you can use any kind of program, you can use like GIMP or like uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever paint.net and stuff like that, any kind of photo editing tool, uh, will even paint, I think, will, will, would even be sufficient, so long as you can get into the actual pixels of it and see the pixels right down to the pixels. Uh, last episode, we did the game, and we made the main game class, so if we hit debug, uh, you'll see the game pop up there, and this is what we created with the ticks, and we have the limiting on the ticks as well. Uh, something that I did figure out after, was the debug mode on this. Well, I've been using it for a while. However, something I was not aware of is you can't actually edit things directly inside an infinite loop like this. So last episode when I was trying to append stuff here, like if I put ticks now or something like that, and then I save it, it won't actually update it here. However, if I take that out and I go down into this function here and I do like a system.out.println and I print out like ping or something, it will actually update it when I save it, and that'll be appended to the screen here if I was drawing anything. So that's something that I encountered last episode and I thought I'd update you guys on. Uh, if you don't know how to set the um, set it so you can do this kind of thing, you can go to Project up at the top uh, in your your files and all that kind of stuff, in your file window, like the file edit source, all that stuff. Go to Project and click on Build Automatically, make sure that's clicked, um, and then just click the little D, the little bug thing here, and it'll put you in this mode. Uh, so you can't directly edit things in an infinite loop, but you can edit things in sub, like in sub methods from that called from that infinite loop. So that's just a tip for you guys, just so you know. It's a very handy thing when you're debugging uh, games like this. But anyways, so let's get straight into it. Uh, we're gonna go open up Photoshop, and we're just going to create a new, and we're just gonna make this sprite sheet 128 by 128, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, actually, I'll scale that up. Let's go 256 by 256 by 200, 200. There. We are going to cancel this. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial in Photoshop right now on uh, creating a pattern because we're going to use a an 8x8 pattern for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File New. We want it to be an 8x8 pattern. There are different ways to do this um, in, in tools such as paint.net and stuff like that. You can create grids straight there, but essentially we're just going to be creating a grid. So we're going to create an 8x8 little sprite here, and this is just going to be the image. And we're going to unlock it and delete what's there. So now we have our little 8x8 image, as you can see with the pixels, if I just fill it in with this color. Uh, we're going to use two colors here. We're going to use one color that we're, we're, going, we're not actually going to use these colors in this game, because this game we're going to have the, the sprite sheet loaded in a monochromatic color, so it's going to be black to white and then we'll we'll apply the colors in the code. Uh, this is actually to help it improve performance and stuff like that, so it gives us stuff like, yeah, it just improves performance in the actual game, but uh, you can just do straight colors from here. But, so what we're going to do is, in, in other ones, in other tutorials, um, what you also could do is use this color scheme that we're going to be applying here, and you could set those colors so whenever those colors are red, if you're using an actual non-monochromatic sprite sheet, you can set those colors just to be like, if it's not if it's not that color, update it, so then these colors would then become invisible colors, and they'd be the, the alpha channels, which is what the, the um, which is what Java interprets as the, well, what anything really interprets as the, uh, the opacity. So that's the alpha channel. So we are going to use this one, FF00FF, that's going to be the main pink color, that's going to be the background color, and for the actual grid, we are going to use uh, 7F007F, so it's just a darker purple color, and these are just two colors used by convention. There are other colors you could use, this is just two colors that you wouldn't normally use in a sprite sheet, we could really use anything. Uh, next we're going to go up to Edit, and go down to Define Pattern, and we're going to call this Sprite you can name it whatever you want. Sprite sheet basic, eight by eight. Okay. So now we can get rid of this one, and I'm just going to close it there. And don't save it. We don't need to save it. We're going to open this one back up. We're going to right-click here, go to blending options. We're then going to go to pattern overlay. We're going to overlay it with this one. This is the. These are some other ones that I have. This one is the the eight by eight one that we just created. We'll hit OK. 
So now you can see, oops, if I just oops, move in here, go in some more, you'll see that these are actually 8 pixels, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 by 8, so the actual right there is the actual block that we would use for the colors. Uh, now I'm going to make a new layer, I'm just going to merge visible, or flatten image, either works, just so that this color pattern is now laid onto the base. So there's your basic sprite sheet. We're going to save it, and we're going to go to the YouTube programming. You're going to save it in your res folder, wherever that's stored. So ours is up here in 2D game res, and we're going to make it a PNG, and we're just going to call it sprite sheet. Sprite sheet with an underscore. That's just my convention. It's, you can really do whatever you want. Hit OK. So now if we go up here and we go back to Eclipse, so now you have your basic sprite sheet, and uh, this is it. It's just an 8x8 basic sprite sheet, and we're going to get into the coloring of that now. Now since we're using monochromatic, I want to limit myself on this um, sprite sheet to four, four colors. So we're going to use a, a black color, a white color, and two in-between colors, a darker and a lighter color. Um, this is something that was shown in a public demonstration by Notch. Um, it was a limitation that he set on himself when he was creating some, some game for uh, Ludum Dare. So we're just going to be using the same sort of thing because it is highly efficient and it's, it's a great thing to actually learn how to do. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we are going to go into Eclipse and we're going to start off by creating a new package. And this one is going to be a graphics package, so GFX. And in this package we're going to create a new class called Sprite Sheet. Okay. And this Sprite Sheet class is going to have a couple variables inside it. So we're going to have a public string. Uh, there's going to be a path, so that's the path to the image. There's going to be a public int width for the width of the sprite sheet, public int height for the height of it, and the pixel data of it. So public int, it's going to be the similar one to that we have in game, where, where is it? It's up here somewhere, right here. Similar to this, it's going to be the, the pixel data of that actual sprite sheet, so we're going to call it pixels. Okay. Now we're going to create the constructor, uh, sprite sheet and it's going to take in the path. That's all we need right now. We're just going to take in the path of where the image is. Now we actually need something to load the image. So similarly, similarly, like we use the buffered image class in here, we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to call buffered image, image, we're going to call it image. Then we're going to load it. So there's going to be a try catch around here that we're going to have to do because this will throw an IO exception. Let's just import that package with control shift O or command shift O, if you didn't know how to do that. Imports packages automatically and organizes them. Anyways, so we're going to set image equal to image IO dot read. Now we need a file or an input stream. So how we're going to get that is we're going to get a local referenced uh, resource. And since this is loaded in the class path, we can do sprite sheet dot class dot get resource or get resource as stream. In this context, you don't, there is no difference in them. You can use either or. Uh, some other cases, you will need certain ones for methods. Uh, as you see, this one returns an input stream. This just does a URL. So you might need some certain methods in an input stream or some in the URL, but that, for the purposes of this, we're just going to use as stream. And then we're just going to put path there. Oops. Whoops. There. So we're going to import everything just to make sure. And now it's going to say unhandled exception, so we're just going to surround with it with a try catch and remove that to do because we don't need it. So now we have an image here and it's going to load this image into there, but sometimes that image can be null. Uh, it should, if it does become null, it should throw this exception, it should close this, this class out, but just in case, we are just going to do a return here, just in case that there's, let's go, oh, set it to null here. There. Uh, just in case it does actually stay null and it continues, it's just a precaution. Uh, then we're going to set class variables, since these are all still null. We're going to say this.path is equal to path, this dot width is equal to, to image dot get width. Oops. Uh, this dot height is equal to image dot get height. Okay. And the last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set the pixels, uh, the pixels variable. So how you do this is it's going to be pixels. There's two different ways you can do this. Uh, both are equally as efficient as the next. Uh, we're going to do image dot get RGB. Okay, so this is going to return the RGB, and you'll see there's two of them here. We're going to use the second one here, and the start exposition is the first uh, variable in this. So we want to start at 0 and 0, start x and y. Uh, the width of it is width, 
the height of it is height, the RGB array, now this is where it gets different. We have two options here. We could either include pixels here and not say pixels e equal to, so we could just say this here, uh, like this, and put pixels in here, or we can set this to null and say pixels is equal to, is equal to. That's just convention thing, it's it's up to you. Um, it's, it's a programmer preferred style. Uh, I prefer seeing where I'm setting variables as opposed to just passing them in and setting them right there. So I, I like this style here. Uh, the offset, we're not going to offset by any, and the scan size is just going to be width. So there's that. Now we have all the color data imported into here, and it's going to all go into this RGB array. But now, what we see is inside this pixel data, there's going to be a bunch of random numbers, like there's going to be like negative 6,452 and negative 4,900 and whatever. And those are all going to be different color data. Uh, they're going to be reference with an alpha channel, two for the alpha channel, two for the red, two for the green, and two for the blue. So if we were to use hex, we could do 0x and then ff for the red, for the alpha because all these colors are going to be opaque. We don't actually need any transparency, so we're going to have opaque opacity here. So we'd put an ff and then say red was like, I don't know, aa. Oh, to get white, you just put all f's like that. And that would be the white color. But uh, so that's essentially what's stored in here, but we don't want that. We just want to set the pixels to those that 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 to which which color we're actually dealing with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say for int i is equal to 0, i is greater than or less than pixels.length. Of course I spelled 4 wrong. Uh, pixels.length i. Plus plus. So it's just another basic for loop as we did over here somewhere when we were setting the, the tick count like this, same kind of thing. Uh, but inside this one, we're going to change the data that pixels contains in. So we're going to say pixels at i is equal to, and then we're going to put some, some brackets here, and we're going to say pixels at i, and, and then 0xff to get rid of the alpha channel. So what this is going to do is it's, it's your regular logical operator and, um, and it's going to remove essentially the alpha channel. So whenever you're dealing with a color, it'd be like zero, it'd be zero x, and then red, green, and blue instead of having that alpha here. That should be a zero, like that. So that's essentially what that's doing. And then since we also want to only have four colors here, we're going to divide by 64. Um, another way we could do this is divide by 255 divided by four. Uh, but 255, if I open up this, 255 divided by 4 turns into 63.75. So it's really, really close to 64. So that's why we're just using 64 here. Okay. And uh, so that's that. And what this is going to do is it's going to put a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 into our sprite sheet. So we're going to, that's all we need for this one. We're going to go into the main class. We, we can, we'll leave this for now. And in the main class, we're going to create a sprite sheet variable. So private sprite sheet. Um, and we're going to call it sprites, actually sprite sheet equals new sprite sheet. And if you have multiple sprite sheets, you can, we would normally make this a static class. So all these things would be static and they'd just be created once. But we may want to use multiple sprite sheets, like a mob sprite sheet and like a, a, I don't know, an entity sprite sheet, whatever. So this is just to allow us to do that. So actually, we'll probably call this just block sprite sheet, but whatever. Let's leave that for now. If we deal with those, we will change those later. Uh, new sprite sheet, and we're just going to say sprite, sprite underscore sheet dot png. So that's referencing this file again. So we're going to import everything. You'll see now that it's it's nice and um, yellow for us, saying that it's not used, but it is actually there. So and this will get called when that's loaded. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to I'm going to show you what the output of this is. So for now we're only going to show the first eight pixels, which will be, be these ones here, these first pixels. So I'm going to show you the data inside there. So we are just going to say for int i is equal to 0, i is greater than 8, i++, plus plus, or i is less than 8, sorry. Now we're going to say pixels, now we're going to say system.out.println, and it's going to say pixels at i. Okay? So that's going to show us the first 8 bits and where they fall within that monochromatic thing. So you see these are all 1s right now. 
Now they're all ones because these bits aren't really relevant. They're they're still colored bits. So it's going to be a one because that one, these are kind of it's it's along this line here, which is kind of in the middle, which is between zero, one. It's it's within the lines. So what we're going to do to get the the four basic colors is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to two two five five because that's the max FFF you can get. Like that's a full color. It's two five five. And we're going to divide it by three because the first color is going to be black, so it's going to be a zero. So we don't need to worry about it. So it's 255 divided by 3, and then we're going to multiply it by whatever color we're doing. So if it's a 0, it's going to be 0. If it's a 1, it's going to be an 85. That's going to be the, the dark middle color. If it's a 2, it's going to be 170. And if it's a 3, it's going to be the full white. So we're going to start with the 1, and it's going to be, well, we'll start with a 0 just to prove it. It's going to be 0. So we'll go in here, and we're going to go 0, 0, 0. That gives us the first color, and we are going to color, whoa. Where did that sprite sheet go? Come here. There. Okay. So we're going to color the first two bits black because those are the first two in this this sprite sheet here. Next, we're going to multiply it by 1 to get the next color. So that's 85. So we're going to do 85, 85, 85. And then we're going to color the next two bits that color. And then we're going to do 2 and do 170. So it's going to go 170, 170, 170. And we're going to color the next to that. And then the third one is going to be white. So we're just going to do uh, 255, 255, 255. A shortcut as well is just full Fs, as you can see. So there's that. So these are the first eight bits. We're going to save it. And we're going to save it back as sprite sheet and PNG. I think this is the right folder. Yep. Sprite sheet and save. Replace. OK. We're going to refresh this just so that if we export it, it'll it'll update it. We don't need to worry about that. And now we're going to run it, and you're going to see the pixels pop up again. So now you saw them, and these are the first eight bits, remember. So you'll see here 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. So it's saying this is the 0, this is the 1, this is the 2, and this is the 3. Again, you can use any color between, like, you can use any color between this divided by 4, times 0 times 1, 63, so it's 64. So you can use any color really between 0 and 64 for the first color, and any color between 64 and 128 for the second color. But this is just a nice way to get a nice, I don't know, nice variance of color, I guess. It's just one way to do it. Uh, so yeah, that's been this tutorial. Uh, that's all I really have for this tutorial. Um, it was a quick tutorial on a basic sprite sheet that we got. So uh, I, next next episode, we're going to be doing the screen class, and we're going to actually be writing these these some of these sprite sheets to the actual screen. So we'll get into that and rendering the screen out. And uh, this has been your second tutorial. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free. To, sorry about that. Uh, feel free to post them in the description below. Uh, always happy to get comments and questions. It's a great thing to have. And uh, I shall see you guys next time. So have a good day.